You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. Sorry, your shirt seems to be playing 1970s porn music. <laughs> I think I look quite stylish, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Hello, welcome to Chewing the Cuds. <laughs> You're just jealous. Of course I'm jealous. Anyway, what have you got for us this week, Mike? Can you chuck your shirt up, please? <laughs> You wish you were this sexy. Talking of wish. Anyway, this week I have a story about what happens when you fr send a friend to an antique roadshow. And then we deal with being a little bit lonely in Crafty Queens. Oh, and we even have a game to play in our game of the week. But on your screen now, you should see our social media contact information. Just look for At The Cud TV. And as the names of people have dropped us a line, hello, oh poor music, go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Mist and the 1970s showbiz. It's come to fix the photocopier. <laughs> He's horrible to me. Anyway, time for the showbiz news. Well, we say showbiz news. Do we, do we count influencers as, show, as celebrities? Are they hot? Well... We will see. This is for you to judge, really. So that's a yes, because Mr's got terrible taste in men. <laughs> this is true. Um, and shit. To be fair, they've got 27 million... <laughs> you are horrible to me. They've got 27 million followers, which is definitely more than this show garners. Okay. Um, their name is Jefferson Cosio. Oh, yeah, he's hot. Really? Oh, yeah, I follow him on Instagram. You do? Mm -hmm. But have you noticed a change recently? Started to wear a lot more clothing. I disapprove. <laughs> well, they've uh, splashed out some £140,000 okay. to go through a very, very painful operation. Oh, willy extension. No, it is an extension, but not their willy. It's, it's of the first two Look legs. Look at that. Look at that. Well, he is a very, very handsome man. I'll give you that. Fit. But. Like most people, no matter how fit and sexy they may be, mm -hmm. insecure. Okay. And the thing that they're insecure about has been their legs. All right. Now, they've gone through a leg extension surgery. Ooh. They've spent that amount of money just to become four inches taller. So he literally wished he was a little bit taller? Yes. Did he wish he was a baller? Well, I don't, I don't think we can see that Did bit on the surgery. Did he wish he had a girl and he could call her? <sighs> mm. I, yeah, I know the lyrics, I'm just not indulging you. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was the baller. Well, yeah, he did wish he was a little bit taller. He was originally five foot eight inches. Okay. Which is not bad. It's a little teeny, but it's not bad. It's not really a little teeny. It, well, mm, I say that as a six foot man. It's two inches shorter than me. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, he basically he likes his legs. He thinks they're pretty, but mm -hmm. um, spent a lot of money on them. He hates them because uh, after this surgery, basically they broke all the bones in his leg, mm -hmm. added in magno magnetic rods. Okay. Because obviously, if you're going to get taller, you can't just put in extra length. Your muscles around it have to develop and stuff like that. So the whole process is Ooh. like six months. Ouch. For them to stretch the leg muscles to accommodate as well. Ooh. Um, so, yeah, they just spent that whole time in constant pain. And I believe still now in pain afterwards as well. Sleepless nights. and they, All for just an extra four inches. When they looked pretty, pretty to begin with. Yeah. It's all just about that insecurity. Hmm. Would you pay that much money for an extra four inches? Mm. <laughs> Not quite that much. On the odd occasion. Anyway, um, yeah, it just goes to show no matter who you are, you can have these physical insecurities 100%. and the lengths that people will go to. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, poor fellow. 
Okay. Well, well, well if, if you've got the money and that's what you want to do with it, then that's what you want to it, do. If it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. Well, I don't think it made him that happy if I was yeah. in that much pain. That's sleep fair. is important. I like a lot of sleep. Well, anyway, it's, moving it's wearing on. Wearing the bed sheet as a... <laughs> as a shirt, yeah. Oh, you can shut up. This is a nice shirt. Right in, if you agree. Anyway. Yes, right in. Did on your you... typewriter, because you don't have the internet in the 70s yet. <laughs> Did you, when you were growing up, um, have your first crushes about any cartoon characters? No. No? No. I used to think He-Man would be attractive if he was real. See, uh, my first crushes were on He-Man and, and, and Panthro in the Thundercats. Panthro? Mm, did like a bit not, of Panthro. Not even the main one. Not oh, Lion. no, not Lion, Panthro. No. He was a punk. No. The old guy. The, yeah. Daddy yeah. issues. Mm, maybe. But anyway. Maybe. It was, it was all the leather gear and the. They were all the wearing leather. They're all wearing leather and fur. Well, yeah, well. You mm. wanted the blue old guy. I wanted the blue old guy. Blue man yeah. group, it was effort. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite common. Like, the classic on the heterosexual side is Wilma Flintstone or Jessica Rabbit. Lots of people find Jessica them Rabbit very, was very, sexy. very, very attractive, but she was supposed to be. They took all the archetypes of all of the 30 sex symbols and made mm -hmm. them into a, a super sexy. So it's possible to find cartoon characters. I didn't say it wasn't sexy. possible, I just thought it was not for me. Well, those were the, the sexy cartoons of yesteryear. Okay. We have a modern one. Have you watched Inside Out? I love Inside Out. So, are you happy there's going to be a sequel? I am happy there's going to be a sequel. Also a little bit scared that it's going to be shit. Well, there might be something a little extra in it for you. Oh. Mm. So, the whole concept is about the interior emotions having personalities. The inner workings of your brain. Inner workings of the brain. And it's all dealing with coming to terms with puberty, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, the main character's father, um, they appear in it. Riley's dad. Mm -hmm. Only now they've got a moustache. They've always had a moustache. He's always been a bit dilfy. Well, they're very particularly dilfy in Inside Out 2, apparently. And, um, yeah, starting to get a bit of a, bit, a... bit of a following from the old... Uh, thirsty gays. Thirsty gays. Yeah, it's always thirsty gays. <laughs> yeah, and I can kind of see their point. I, 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 I wouldn't, if, if that was real and in the flesh... I, I, I wouldn't be too disappointed. Now, people were telling me about this when the first film came out. Mm -hmm. I noticed something and pointed it out and it kills it for people. I don't know whether I should share it. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Okay. It's a little bit cross-eyed. Oh, yeah. In every picture you see him, he's a little bit cross-eyed. Well, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. Representation in the but media. But now you're going to not be able to unsee it. To be honest, that's the way guys usually look at me anyway. <laughs> I thought they would tend to look at you with through a blindfold. <laughs> Rude. Anyway, there's something I else... I wasn't kink-shaming. I know you weren't. Anyway, another, another movie story. This one I'm particularly excited about because I was very much a fan of the first film... We have not a remake, but a potential sequel in the works. Okay. For the 1998 film, mm -hmm. Practical Magic. You were always on my mind. You were always on my mind. It's the, uh, it's the, it's the Midnight Margaritas that really stuck with me. That's what I was doing. Because we found it on the porch. We found it on the porch. I meant the actual drink. I've been doing that for years, just waking up in the middle of the night and knocking back a margarita. And if you have an alcohol abuse problem, there is support available to you. <laughs> but, yeah, apparently the original cast are in talks to be doing a sequel. So excited for that. Yeah. Because this was very much a... They they're, were on the rise to their fame mm -hmm. for every all of them, and it, I would love to see them now that they're actually minted and don't need to do it. Do it. Well, they were very established actors even they then, to be fair. But they, they were definitely on the meteoric. They were oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they weren't at the peak yet, no. And, and it's, it's just such a fun film. And for um, those of us who might be of a, a magical bent, 
is the reason I'm called Mist. Um, it 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 a is a magical bent. A magical bent. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's actually quite. It feels real. It's 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 the way it really. It, no, there wasn't any um, mad magical special effects. Not like crazy bonkers zapping electricity out your fingers kind of stuff. Ghosts in it? It had ghosts in it. There's yeah, ghosts in the real world. We are dealing with a non-believer. <laughs> but you get what I mean. It Why wasn't... is it you only see ghosts in specifically spooky places? You never see an, a cow wandering around Asda. Who says you can't? No, it... Oh, I saw a cow at Asda. <gasps> Where were you? In the, in the meat aisle? No, freezer section. <laughs> it used to be a field. Cow died there. Now it's a ghost. It's, it's always a... Oh. And that's everything from the showbiz. Thanks for that, Mist. Mystical bent. Well, you're welcome. Stick around, though, as next it's Mike in the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's go into the deep recesses of disgusting, depraved, dank internet corners with Mike in the buzz. Why well, say one word when 19 will do? Anyway, um, so... You you are a fan of pooches, 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 Poo -poo pooches. As in uh, little doggies, little doggies. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I quite like a little doggy. Good. How would you feel if you witnessed a dog pushing over a vending machine onto a child? Depends on whether the child's annoying or not. You don't know the child. You just witnessed a dog pushing a vending machine over onto the child. I I I'd, I'd run and try and save the child. Okay, because that's what happened, right? Um. You didn't watch it, but um, I'm always really concerned about their son after their family dog knocked a vending machine over onto him. Oh! Yeah, seriously ill. Rushed to hospital stuff. Oh no! Right. Um, it was. A, oh, I thought it was a little baby. It's a no, small it's a, boy. It's an eleven-year-old. Oh. Um, oh, that can cope with that. Okay. It was a dog knocking over a vending machine. Yeah. That's concerning. The dog was a Springer Spaniel. Mm-hmm. Not a particularly big dog. Nope. Um, but yeah, son bent over to look at, to pet another dog, home from school sort of thing. Gus the Springer Spaniel ran up, knocked into the vending machine, vending machine went <coughs> onto the sun. I've just clocked what the vending machine's been selling. Live bait. Well, the poor doggy was probably hungry. No, no, he's going over to say hello to the child. And banged into the, the vending machine. The Springer Spaniel, they're not great. Right? But yeah. End up with a fishy end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, how bad were the injuries? Do we know? Um, severe. Spent time in hospital. Mum feared of life. Concerned Ooh. about death. Oh, I feel guilty about laughing now. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mean and horrible and, and callous and cynical like some people. You don't necessarily mean you feel guilty about laughing at something that is actually quite funny. Poor child. Poor child. Poor, Poor child. Gus. He must have been distraught knocking a, a vending machine over. Well, it would have been worse if the vending machine popped open and they are just covered in maggots. <laughs> it doesn't say maggots, it says live bait. Well, I usually think of maggots as being live bait. Or me. It could have, have a little... Well, you're a maggot? No! Live bait. Right, what you do on your Cam Soda account... Nothing to do with anybody. Um, Do you remember the whole porn series of Bait Bus? No. No? What was Bait Bus? It, it, it was where you, uh, you lure men into the back of a, a, a big car okay. and there'd be a very sexy, beautifully laden woman and say, well, just drive around and if you like, you this beautiful, large-breasted lady will give you a blowjob. OK. And then they'd blindfold him and then swap the lady out for a gentleman who would give them the job of their life and then whip it around whilst they were in the middle of it 
and then inevitably they'd always carry on. Okay, so it's staged then? Oh yeah, it was uh, pretty obviously staged, I believe. How many episodes did you watch? I, uh, this was in my throes of, of enjoying porn, so quite a few. I don't do throes it very of much anymore. No. Not, not, in, not in the privacy of his own home. Trains? <laughs> Watching porn on trains, he's up for that. You're never going to let me live that down, I'm never going to let you live that down, no. It was an accident. Th three seconds is, is an accident, right? Four minutes, that's watching porn. It's a lie, it never happened, it was an accident. I've got written documentation. Anyway, talking of doing things where you shouldn't be doing things, mm -hmm. with your job, your day job, which you have. I do, do you have ever, a day job, Do you ever yes. work from home? Oh yes, I work from home all the time. All the time. All the time. What are the dangers of working from home? Um, being nude and forgetting to you know, turning the camera on How for a work meeting. How forget that you're nude? <laughs> How are no, you affording your work. heating? I though? don't work nude. It's naked. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't, I, I, it's, it's given my work-life balance brilliantly back. Wonderful, marvellous, epic. I don't get to work from home. Um, don't care. I actually, I actually like being in an office environment because when you're calling someone a dickhead, you can like to do it to their face <laughs> so you can smell it, the, like the upset in the room. Um, but uh, this is a story about uh, Mayor, okay, from um, Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. okay, who has been caught literally with his pants down while on a video call because he was having a poo. No! Yeah. So No, you don't, you don't. Having a poop. On a video call, right? Um, and his colleagues only realised when he stood up to flush. No meeting is that serious that you have to take it to the, the stall with you. No. No. Well, it's very fuzzy image as well. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't want to see his poop. No, I don't want to see his poop, poop either. New. No. So he's straining right there. Like, mm. But maybe it was just a particularly difficult meeting. That's a particularly difficult poo, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, his excuse for this was he forgot that he was in a meeting. Does that mean he spends a lot of his time at work sat on the toilet? Pooping while in meetings. But he just forgot whilst he logged in? Yeah. Maybe he just preferred the background in the loo. Just take a picture. I've done that. I've got a background of where I work in my office. I've taken a picture of the background as if I was sat in it so that you can't tell whether I've got the background on or whether it's actually at home. It's clever. Deceptive. What are you judging me for? I, 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 I'm not judging you at all. You, I'm saying you, nothing. You're sat there judging me like a judgy thing from the no. 1970s porn film. <laughs> Like a, like a 70s porn film can be judgy. Yeah. Judging that photocopy is broken. Anyway, and if you don't buy clothes from Wish, you buy it from a subsidiary of Wish, you can always share with us at the Could TV on social media. That's at the Could TV on social media, Mist. Um, but that brings us nicely to our story of the week. How do you feel about... Are you OK there? It's not Wish. It's not Wish. It's a subsidiary of Wish. So... How do you feel about classic TV? Institutional TV. Mm, 70s porn, I love it. Institutional TV. So things that are always on that, you know, if they ever went away, like casualty. Yeah. The day that yeah. casualty ends is going to be a sad day. The, the, the programme uh, equivalent of a national treasure. Exactly. The Antiques Roadshow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this story is about the Antiques Roadshow. Okay. okay. And how it's caused a bit of a family kerfuffle. Oh, no, not a family kerfuffle. Mm hmm. That's the uh, highest level of drama, a kerfuffle. It's uh, up from a situational thing. Well, a situation is... is, is no, a situational thing. A situational thing? Yeah. Mm, this whole situational thing. Mm. That's not as good as a kerfuffle. No, a kerfuffle is far worse. Brouhaha. Oh. <laughs> oh, if there's a brouhaha going on, phone the police. Oh, no. Don't know why Sting's going to be helpful. Roxanne! What? But anyway, um, it's a story about a lady who went on the Antiques Roadshow mm -hmm. with a picture. 
mm -hmm. right, that she was taking over for, for one of her family members to get it valued. Mm -hmm. right? The valuation came back and she went, oh, okay. Six months later, the picture has not been returned to the family member. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. Um, it's, it's a 19, like, 30s, 40s print style picture. It's very It's nice a little bit it. saucy. It's a little bit saucy. They refused to give it back. Right? They said, no, it's mine now. I'm literally taking it away. It is there dubious ownership? Like, it belonged to our mother and she preferred me anyway, no? No, 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 no. So it's just straight up stealing then? Theft. Wow. Theft. Like stealing from the fashion police. Um, I didn't say you've done that. I didn't say that Mr's stolen something from the fashion police. If, if you'd like to write to the TV watchdog to complain about the bullying you've witnessed on TV this evening... Um, please reference, do... please reference. It's at the Good TV on everything that you reference, OK? And the case reference is that <laughs> shirt. You've not even ironed it. Uh, well, I don't. I don't dare take an iron to it. Can you Why imagine? Is that? Well, because it's mostly plastic. <laughs> it's shiny. Don't you dare take that away. Don't. Don't you dare take that away. Take that away. I can feel tense muscles from here. So yeah. Anyway, that's just me, arsehole. <laughs> that's not been tense for a very long time. So. Um, yeah, so Colleen Fesco uh, was left in hysterics as, as the guest refused to give it back. So, I think that's actually, for, for what little you can see of it, because obviously I'm sure there's more going on, mm -hmm. but that actually liked, does look a very pretty picture. I liked the picture. I thought it was very good. It was very, like, I'd expect it in a, in a diner. Yeah. Somewhere in America in, like, the late 60s, early 70s. Like, well, even that saucy. It's mm -hmm. quite saucy. It's quite saucy, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or well, it's just, a very pert bottom. Maybe she's just young. You remember that, right? Um, but that's all for the buzz this week. Thanks for that, Mike. A pleasure as always. Now stick around, because coming up next, we're going to play a game of how much was that shirt with Mist? Two ninety nine pound free with a happy meal. Welcome back, and yes, you're watching a very handsome man in a very attractive shirt presenting a TV show called Chewing the Cut. And we're going... missed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to play a game in our little game of the week, and this one is for the man who really has no sense of fashion whatsoever. Go on, off your pop. Sorry, did you just say I don't have a sense of fashion? Yes. Wearing that bed sheet from the <laughs> 1970s porn. <laughs> Game of the week. So, we have a new game, I believe. Yes. Do you want to know what it's called? Yes, please. It's called You Just Lost the Game. Oh, you... You know, so I can really go off you. Let's play... What what have you actually got for us? It's a new game called You Just Lost the Game. Oh, just... Uh, mm, mm. What? You Look, know I didn't exactly what you're name. up to. You I know. didn't come up with this name. This is the game that came on the back of the game. Right, so you have a choice of four subjects. Okay. Who said that? The Breaker, a general knowledge or TV trivia. Ooh, I like the sound of the breaker. This is just general knowledge by another name. Oh, it sounded a bit more dramatic. It than did, that. didn't it? Yeah. The, the, the theatrical music helped. <laughs> so, how many Oscar nominations did the film Titanic receive? Oh, receive. The ones they actually. Uh, how, oh, nominations received. they received, not received. the nominations they won. Nominations did they receive? 15. I think he did very, very well that year. About 15 or 15? 15. My guess is 15. OK, miss. Well, you just lost the game because it was 14. Oh, I was close. But no cigar. You're not Monica Lewinsky. So, who said that? General knowledge or TV trivia? Who said that? Me, I just asked you the questions. <laughs> no, I mean, can I have the category? Whom said that? There isn't one called whom said that, it's who said that. Pick out the card, do your job, read it. Okay. Who said 
<laughs> At school, I used to wear thick spectacles and a mouthful of braces. Was it Katie Durham, Kirsty Young, or Natasha Kaplinsky? <laughs> Can we just have a moment of appreciation for Natasha Kaplinsky's name? It's a good name. I like it. Let's go with that one. Natasha Kaplinsky. OK, well, you just lost the game because it was Katie Durham. <laughs> Who is Katie Durham? She was very famous for doing a... Next question. Um, so you have adoption of general knowledge or TV trivia? Oh, I'll, I'll go with general knowledge. Okay, general knowledge. Okay. Save the best for us. In which <laughs> World Cup did footballer Gaza famously burst into tears? Oh, why sport? Because I had the choice of two questions and one was sport. Oof. I think possibly 1997. Ooh, Italian 90. I don't care. Oh, sorry. Just forgot to tell you something. Go on. You just lost the game. So next question is TV trivia. You don't get a choice. Sorry, uh, sorry go on. Say that again. The gallery were chipping up. Yeah. Which actor played, played Grange Hill... Grange Hill. Oh, I, I used to love Grange Hill. Tear away Tucker, otherwise known as Peter Jenkins. Um, Tucker, and also in a TV show called Tucker's Luck, was the guy who would go on and play Mark in EastEnders. And his name is? Oh! No, that's not his name. I could see, I could, I could, I could picture him in my head. Um, I can't, I can't, I genuinely can't remember the actor's name. Very much reminded me of my brother. Well, you've just lost the game because it was Todd Carthy. That's the one. Yeah. He was a bit of a dreamboat in 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 early in the early eighties. With that massive mole. Well, there's no accounting for taste. I mean, he wasn't a dreamboat to me. I was about in that shirt. Two. I know. I used to have a pair of boxers that were this material. Uh huh. Nineteen nineties. Yeah. Anyway. So you get a reset. So who said that? Uh, breaker, general knowledge, or TV trip? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Get out of my pub. <laughs> okay. Who said? What is it? Whom said? Who said we can tilt the world a little bit to favour the poor? <sighs> no idea, Mother Teresa. Was it? Oh, there's Mahat options. Yeah, that was, that was just the first time. Was it Mahatma Gandhi, Bob Geldof, or Princess Diana? Oh, that sounds like a Geldof thing. It does sound like a Geldof thing. However, you just won the game. It was Bob Geldof. Yay! So that's, that's the first one you've got right. Well done. I, I Well, I, 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 I'm on a roll now. You've got one, that's not a roll. It's barely It's the beginning of a roll. I can feel it coming on. You can feel it coming on. I can feel Need it coming minute. on. And the next the next the next run is just gonna be winner after winner after winner. Okay. So tiebreaker, general knowledge or TV trivia? I want a breaker. Okay. This one. How many American footballs were signed at the world's largest autograph signing by professional athletes in January 2008? I may have spoke too soon. I think the answer is enough. Enough of what? Enough footballs were signed. And how many is enough? Uh, uh, many is enough. I'm going to need a number. No, you don't. I am. Otherwise, I can't. It's okay. enough to beat the previous world record. And that is technically correct. No. I didn't say a world record. You've invented parts of the question. <laughs> That's question what you was, said, wasn't it? No. no. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> How many, so number required, mm -hmm. American footballs were signed at the world's largest autograph signing 
by professional athletes in 2008. World's largest autograph sign. That so doesn't that's say the record. most a uh, most amount of f- football signs. To be the largest worth, it has to be a record. So I think I think I've been factually correct in both no, no, no. answering the no, question. No, and not the world's the biggest question. signing of footballs. The world's biggest autograph signing. Potato, potato. That's in the potato. second one I've no got one right. Says I've potato. got a sec- I've got a second one right. I told you I was on a roll. You've just lost the game because the answer is four thousand five hundred, which is enough. It's not enough. Right. All the shine of a thousand spotlights, towers of gold. Still too little. It's never enough. Right. General knowledge or TV trivia. Um, give me general knowledge. Or give me death. <laughs> Cake or death? What is the world's largest rodent? Mike Benyon Row. Is that your final answer? Uh, the Tasmanian Devil. Missed. You just lost the game. It's the capybara. Isn't that a Tasmanian devil? No. Tasmanian devil's about this big. Capybara, f***ing massive. Maybe it was just a Tasmanian devil that's not, not, not been on a diet. From a different part of the world. Tasmanian devils famously found in Tasmania. <laughs> I might not be taking this game altogether seriously. <laughs> Wearing that shirt, we're not surprised. TV trivia is the last one. Go on then. In what year was the Antiques Roadshow first broadcast? Oh, we were talking about them earlier. We were. Oh, I think. Do you want the options? Oh, go- oh, there's Crack options. Crack on with yourself. Yeah, no, go on, go on, give me options. Interrupting sheep. Knock, knock. Who's there? The interrupting sheep. The interrupting... Hi, I'm Mist, and you're watching Chewing the Cud. Right. What are the options? 1977, 1987, or 1982? 1982. 1977. You've lost the game completely there. Right. Last one now. Oh. Right. And you're not going to get to pick. Oh, no. I'm going to pick for you. Oh, no. However, will I get it right? Same way you got all the other ones right. Why not? What... Speed in miles per hour does the planet Mercury orbit the sun? Enough. Enough. As if it was less than enough. <laughs> it would spin out into the galaxy. <laughs> if it wasn't enough, it would spin out into the galaxy. <laughs> If it wasn't enough, it would be absorbed by the sun. (laughs) Done. Done. (coughs) I have no idea. Not a clue. Wouldn't have a Scooby. 12 miles per hour. Yeah, um, stick around, because coming up next, it's me doing Crafty Queens, because this one can't do it himself. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to make something to keep you company at night. It's Crafty Queens. Do you get lonely at night, mister? Increasingly so these days. May I make a suggestion? Oh, please do. Stop wearing satin shirts. <laughs> right. I mean, it won't help with your love life, but it'll possibly help with everybody else. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take common or vegetables and, and vegetables and fruits. Right? Fruits and vegetables. vegetables flora and, and fauna. Uh-huh. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make it so you're less lonely by using them. Um, I have bananas and you have a cucumber. Well, there's, there's, there's one way I can imagine that might help me feel less lonely at night. And, and I think you're thinking the right thing because we're going to make veggie pals. Veggie pals! Veggie pals, yeah. Because um, that's what you were thinking, right? Yeah. 
Uh huh. You that's, that's about. absolutely what I was thinking. Inserting that in your ass or all sideways. I know. Um, what you finished? <laughs> finished? I don't know. It is giving me flashbacks to a much happier time. Anyway. First thing I need to do is remove the plastic from the outside of your cucumber. Okay. I've uh, given you a pair of scissors to assist. I... I can, I can peel, pe peel my uh, cucumber. Not quickly, not well, but you can Not do quickly it. or well, no. This is actually more of a struggle than I would have imagined. Which is why I gave you a pair of scissors to assist. You don't need a pair of scissors for this. I think you do. <laughs> Clearly I do, yes. We have all time. Well, give give me give me some forewarning about what what you're planning on doing. Removing a plastic wrapper from a well cucumber. after that bit. Right now, what I've, I've given you some accoutrement. So I've mm -hmm. given you some googly eyes. I've just dropped one of googly eyes. Goog um, googly eyes. I've given you some googly eyes. Mm -hmm. Some pipe cleaners for hands and arms and things. Mm -hmm. And then some card to do like happy faces and things. And Ooh. Things. Okay. So I'm giving you free reign at this point to design your veggie pal as you wish. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's give this a go then. Yes, let's. And then if you're very lucky and you're very well behaved, mm -hmm. also got a potato there that you can do. Ooh. But again, very lucky, very well behaved. Okay. But the one, th one thing I've learned about you, Mist, is you don't get lucky. <laughs> I, I would like to argue with you, but unfortunately, I know that uh, I can't don't have a leg to stand on. Already. See, that's almost human already. Oh, well done. Yeah. Let's take some googly eyes on a banana. Everyone's happy. So have you done this sort of thing before, Mist? <laughs> um, I've, I've not usually gone to the bother of decorating it, no. Okay. Hey, have you just twisted that pipe clean around? Yes, I have. Well, I didn't want to pierce it through. I did Go want on. to ruin the structural integrity. Could, could have glued it on. I could have glued it on, yes, but I didn't. Mmm. I'm gluey. Mmm. Where am I going to go from here? Oh, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> oh, I think I might try. Give that a go. Have you chopped the end off the cucumber? I, I, I have to give it a, a, a strong, solid base. Or insert a suction cup. So the other side of the banana of the cucumber, where is it? <laughs> it's down. It's the on the table. You can see it there. Okay. Just because you know form. Well, it would take a bit more than that, even after all this all this time. So have you ever made veggie pals before? Um, I can't say that I have. I've, I've, I have had very lonely periods in my life. I, I will confess to that. That's nothing But not that lonely that I've had to make imaginary friends out of vegetables. These aren't imaginary friends, they're real friends. I'm not asking you to make believe that you've made a friend out of a vegetable. I'm asking you to make a friend out of a vegetable. To be fair, most of my friends are vegetables. And yes, I do include you in that. It's a bit harsh. <laughs> Not Very untrue. Oh, it is, I'm not a vegetable. I beg to differ and I use exhibit A, what we're doing right now, as 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 evidence. Right, so because because I have to pick things that you can do. <laughs> I you should see my artistic endeavours at you home. You keep threatening to do this, and yet nobody has witnessed them. Oofed. Now the problem I have here. Oh. Is I made a miscalculation with some super glue. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a veggie pal and extra arms. <laughs> oh dear. 
I'm being asked why I didn't have a glue gun from the gallery. Well, it's a very good point. Why did ah. you not have a glue gun? That didn't tickle. <laughs> Ooh, am I going to be able to achieve this? I don't know if you can achieve anything, Mist. I mean, you can achieve anything you want to, Mist. And then I just need to make it so it can sit down, so I'm going to chop its dick off. <laughs> I'll go. You're right, Dean, it is. Of course, yeah, I've got a veggie pal now. How are you getting on? Um, I, I, I'm getting somewhere. Okay. I'm just playing with the glue on my thumb. I think, okay, let me try with that. Um, I think you might be quite impressed with mine. I've not used the potato. And what makes you think I'm going to be impressed by that? Um, because you've got low standards and low expectations of me. Oh, I do have very low expectations of you, Miss Yorker, right there. <laughs> mean I'm going to be impressed by something. Ooh, ow. Okay. So what, I, th well, I think I, I think I'm done. Okay, so Miss thinks he's done. I know I am done. In so um, remember, if you can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between, use a banana and be a crafty queen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Well, there's a tribute act that we didn't expect to see from Miss today. Um, are, you, are you proud of yourself there? Well, let's have a look at, at, at your little... It's a bit rudimentary, really, isn't it? It's Paul, yeah. It's it's Paul. It's called Paul. You've, Paul you've called banana. it called Paul the Banana. Is is that in, in tribute to a certain member of our gallery? No. No. Well, he's had his nose fixed. Um... Yeah, it's a bit rudimentary. When he said had his nose fixed. Yeah. He went into it for surgery to get something removed. Like Britney Spears when Britney Spears when she kept waiting for a knee operation came out with bigger tits. Mm. Well, I, I I I see I see your efforts. Uh-huh. And I would like, because I think it's better this time for once, my efforts. I give you the muscle Mary but <laughs> cucumber. Look, he's got a little six pack and, and pectorals and big muscular arms and eyes bulging for too many steroids. That's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join me on social media at the Could TV and all the usual places and missed on Pornhub where he's sticking a muscled cucumber up his own rectum. <laughs> I'm in love. <laughs> Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Let me see.